it's Mike Mike's from Indiana. You've got him on the line? Exactly. He's on the ground there, actually. I could really, you know, get back to it. Of course. Go ahead. Oh, I hope. Send me a message later. Thanks. Hello, Nathan. Sorry to keep you waiting. My editor. Where were we? Hey, um, you, you were asking about the guy, the, the one that went back there, the, the guy that, um... Ah, that's right. And did you know him well? No, not really. He worked maintenance on our trucks. He was employed by IDAP? No, no, nothing like that. I, I'm, I mean, he just helped us out a few times. Off the book stuff. Guy was a local mechanic. Family business type thing, you know? I see. I remember he had a place on the edge of town, not far from our setup. We chat from time to time. He's a nice guy, friendly. And do you know where he was going that day? To the church. He was going to church? No, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, that place had been abandoned for almost a year. But he was looking for his brother. At the church? Yeah, there'd been reports of, uh, you know... Pretty brutal firefight up there. He'd heard his brother might have been caught up in it. Sure, but and I'm not quite clear on this. Was his brother still alive? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think he knew either. Seems like he was on his way to find out. So, his brother, he was in the army? Uh, yes and no. It's, it's complicated. You gotta remember it was pretty chaotic back then. Mm, of course. Um, okay, let's back up a bit. Sure. What complicated the situation? Just the history of it all. His brother had been a recruit in the Altus Armed Forces, boot camp, basic training, you know. Well, this is back when NATO was still keeping the peace. But after U.S. forces pulled out, apparently he deserted. Do you know why? No, just, I know they argued a lot about it. Hello, Pete speaking. Hey, sorry about that. Call must have dropped. The network out here is garbage. No problem. It's understandable. Are you still driving? Yeah, we're not at the town yet. Hold on a sec. Andy, we almost there. We're, uh, a little ways out. Oh, and we need to make one quick stop, too. Thanks, bud. So, um, where'd we get cut off? Um, you were telling me about the church. The landmine? The accident. Right, yeah, well... Of course, a civilian casualty like that, particularly, you know, the church. I guess it kind of refocused our attention here. Had IDAP been particularly active in the area? Yeah. I mean, our project had a handful of camps spread across the country. But yeah, I was in the town itself for a few months. It's all different now, though. How so? Well, for one thing, IDAP used to be based right in the heart of Oreo Castro. Of course, this was all pre-war. At that time, the local military maintained a checkpoint on the outskirts of town. Wild West. Big mashup of civilian and guerrilla infrastructure. 
Disaster waiting to happen, really. I don't know. It's strange to see our camp base there now. Hey, sorry about the holdup. We're on the way now. All right, thanks, Andy. So, um, what's your role there today? Now? Uh, in general, the provision of aid. There was a lot of damage. My dad fills the gap. Drinking water, basic medicine, post-war cleanup, in other words. Mm. And on the ground, how does that translate to your work? It's a mixed bag. Like today, part demining, part unexploded ordnance disposal. I see. Heads up, Mac. Almost there. Got it. I'm sorry about that. We're arriving now. Give me a sec. All right, Mac. That's your stuff all laid out here. Hold on just a sec, Kate. I need to get set up. Take your time. Right then, you got everything? Detector working? You, uh, remember how to switch it on, right? I forgot to mention, the demining toolkit, totally forgot to pack it up this morning. That's no big deal. We're just locating the mines for now. Just keep me posted. Are you free to talk, Nathan? Sure. For now, I'm just sweeping the road for mines, getting a lay of the land, you know. The detector lets us see what we're dealing with here. I can, I can work and chat. Question. What happens when you do find a landmine? Ordinarily, we disarm it, but today, small oversight, we haven't got all our gear right now. Oh, it's on the way, I hope. Yeah, it's all good. So, since the war's now over, has your own role changed at all? Yeah, I guess so. Now I'm almost entirely focused on EOD and UXO. And that's something you did in the military, too. Yeah. That's the thing about mines. War or not, win or lose, they don't go away. How many minefields are you facing on Altis? That we know of, 22. 23, including whatever's here. Plus, you've got Stratus, another four over there, I think. I see. And can you estimate, roughly, how long it would take to remove them all? A <sighs> lot of variables, but cleanup operation of this size, if it's only IDAP, we're talking years.
Do you ever get nervous? Yeah, but not when I'm working. It, it hits you after. Or before. Andy, I'm at the barricade. Cool. And the road? Yeah, it's what we thought. A dozen or so APs. Nothing the old bobcat can't handle. I got a blocked door here. Yep. NATO still hasn't gotten its ass into gear. I can make some calls, but, uh... Yeah, I'll come back later. There was a beautiful oak tree here once, 300 years old. Folks used it as a meeting spot. They had to pin notes for one another on the trunk. Hmm, I got a UXO here dug right into the wall. Shit. The 
You'll need the toolkit for that job. I'll get on the horn to dispatch. See what's taking him so long. I'll come back later. camp used to be. Anything left? Not much. A few memories, maybe. Just some old boxes here and there. Idaps. Yeah. It was NATO that helped bring them in. Actually, it was one hell of a supply drop. So, the supply drop, this was when exactly? Right around the time we saw the ceasefire starting to break down. Must be more than a year ago now. So, at that time, your camp was in the center of town? Yeah, things were getting pretty desperate, though. I remember we hadn't been resupplied in months. No food, water, medicine. We were used to issues with logistics, but I don't know. It got so bad, U.S. forces prepared an airdrop. Not an easy task, considering but those crates, they really were life and death. That's why we needed somebody on the ground. Someone to make sure they came down okay. And who was that? A guy named Adams. Part of the NATO peacekeeping force. Close friend of mine, actually. It was his job to locate a drop zone. In the mountains? Mm-hmm. Needless to say, High Command always had ideas, but they weren't always good. Plus, no one had planned for those crosswinds flaring up. But our supplies were already in the air. He made a spur-of-the-moment decision? Pretty much, yeah. Although he described it with more, um, direct language. Adams? He went out alone? From the way he told it, he may as well have. No, he went along with some new recruits, local bunch. It was his job to show them the ropes. clear on. Why didn't IDAP transport the aid themselves? There must have been a reason. Yeah, there was. A couple of weeks previously, guerrillas had ambushed a convoy. It was some dissident group out to sabotage the peace talks in Karvala. Anyway, NATO intervened and the whole thing just blew up. A checkpoint was hit. Protesters were fired upon at the MOD. Yes, I, I, we were there. AAN. Then you know how bad it got. 
Our movements were limited by the government. Exactly. And convincing anybody to reassign troops, to escort NGOs, just a total non-starter. Tell me more about your friend. He was your liaison, right? Right. But Adams and I had a history. We'd, we'd met on a previous deployment. This guy was your typical army lifer. Cynical, sarcastic, big heart, pissed off with everyone, everything, all the time. And he always seemed to know where to find a beer, and was always willing to share it. To the southwest, his command had pointed out what they thought was a promising drop zone. Dismount! Understood. Waiting. Standing by. Gekas, hold fire. Standing by. Engage. Car, 100 meters, just up ahead. Once he'd called in the airdrop, that was it. They just had to sit tight, hope for the best. One thing I don't understand, what were they doing there, all the way up in the mountains? The town, Oreo Castro, this place has historic ties with the guerrillas. For years, people here would provide them with food, water. I see. The government responded by draining the swamp. And that involved sending soldiers? Yeah, coin ops. Adams and his guys were there to remind him of their R2P. Just a sec. I'm getting a bit lost in the lingo here. Hmm? Oh, gotcha. Uh, R2P is their responsibility to protect. Counterinsurgency can get real messy real quick. He was in charge of training. Laws of armed conflict, that kind of thing. Adams normally tossed out an orange smoke grenade, which marked his position for the pilot. Ventus, move to point Delta. Roger that. So, these crates, were there a lot of them? No, there's four. One contained medicine, another fresh drinking water, the rest were packed with rice and grain. Adams had to inspect each one individually. 
Later, we'd arrange collection. Sacks of grain had come apart on impact, total mess. Thankfully, the rice seemed okay. Scan the horizon. Now, the thing with airdrops, they're not exactly subtle. Smoke, noise of the plane, those bright green parachutes, they're gonna get you noticed. And when you're in the middle of bandit country, that's a problem. Petros! Fire! Now, the thing with airdrops, they're not exactly subtle. Smoke, noisy plane, the bright green parachutes, they're gonna get you noticed. And when you're in the middle of bandit country, 
That's a problem. Cover me! Kick-ass! Gunner, get in that vehicle! Solid copy! Ready! The gorillas attacked. Yeah, from what I heard, it was pretty intense. I don't have the numbers, but maybe... Six or seven were killed. Kick us! Dismount! Roger that! Move left! On the way! Moving! The medical items, you can imagine how pleased we were to see those arrive. So they landed safely? Yeah. Yeah, they were fine. As I recall, the bottles of purified water were fine. We've been waiting on those for weeks.
Sacks of grain had come apart on impact. Total miss. Thankfully, the rice seemed okay. And what happened when the supplies had been secured? Adams would fire a flare. Back at the camp, of course, we'd heard all the gunfire, but that flare, when we spotted it, I don't know, felt like finding a moment of hope or something. Sure. I can only imagine. And thanks for sharing. It puts a, I don't know, a human perspective on my work. Speaking of which, your friend, do you think he'd be willing to contribute further? Even, you know, off the record, what with the topic of my article, having an expert, an instructor on the laws of war... It... Look... I'm sorry. I, I know he'd help out however he could, but listen, he died on Stratus a year and a bit later. Landmine. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. I I didn't... No, I... Really, I, I hadn't planned to just land that on you. Hey, uh, hold on just a sec. Something's come up here. <laughs> 